Hi, welcome to Fly Tying, the Angler's Art. I'm Carolyn Sells, and of course, this is Leroy Hyatt. And uh, today's program, we're going to uh, do a couple of pretty cool looking little flies. <laughs> we hope so. We hope so. <laughs> we're going to do a Copper John, mm -hmm. and we've got a Soft Tackle Beadhead, and also a Chucker in and Copper. copper. So, Leroy, I think you're going to start out with a Copper John. Copper what, John. What All materials right. are you going to use? I'll use an ADOT thread. I have a size 14 in the vise. Now, you can tie this all the way down to an 18 if you would like. It will have a bead head. And again, I'll do the little wire, uh, lead wire trick. Okay. The tail will be brown goose biots. Now, I have both copper, green, and red wire laid out there. I've seen this fly tied in all three colors. I'll tie okay. a red one tonight. Then the peacock curl. The wing case will be black uh, crystal flash, and then the uh, hackle in it will be the partridge. Okay. I have a, a uh, this hook in the vise, it's a size 14, and uh, have the, uh, the bead already on it. And I'm going to start my lead wire. I always grab my thread, want to start it when it should be this first. Clip it off. And this is a small lead wire. This is a 15,000. Yeah, that's a little And stiff. it doesn't need, you know, you don't need a whole lot. It has to slide up inside that. Uh, yeah, I like that this bead. idea. I'm going to have to remember this this little trick. Well, I, it's worked very well for me. I, I just get tired of fighting that bead. And there may be other tricks of how guys do that. I don't know. But this is what has worked for me. All right, A dot thread. Okay. I want to start right behind where that wire went in again. Again, I got one little piece that didn't roll down. Now I'll wrap over it. Hide it. And this one, all the way up here in front, I have to tie some little uh, uh, wings in, little legs, mm -hmm. I mean. And, and so you gotta kinda have a smooth uh, transition here. That'll break off, I think. If it won't, I'll just keep going wrap over it. I'll cover that with peacock. All right, I go to the rear and take a couple of these brown goose biots. You know, I've read and read and read and read about this fly. You I have, fish this I have one? yet to fish okay. the fly. I guarantee you I will fish it this year. Uh, it was I, pretty cool looking. It well, was I got to fish last year on the Deschutes, and those guys over there were using size 18s uh, and just oh, on the Deschutes, on the Deschutes, and hammering those big red sides. And I don't know why, because it was in the middle of the salmon fly hatch. And they were hitting this. They this were hitting. Over. Yep, sure were. So I made up my mind then. I've got to get the material and learn how to tie this fly. And what this is is just two goose biots. Okay. I've tied them on either side of the hook. I'll run forward just slightly, cut those off, and bind them down. But I, you know, I read, I've read and read and read about the Copper John, the Copper John. I've Copper heard of John. it before, but I and, haven't, I haven't heard of well, it used a lot locally. Yeah, but I've seen, no, I haven't either. Yeah. And I've seen them in different shops. I've just never taken the time to learn how to tie one. But uh, they do come mostly red. I think I see more red than I do anything, at least what I've seen. Um, the copper, I'm sure, would also work very well. I'm going to cut just a small piece off of there. I'm going to lay it on top and just take some wraps, bind the whole thing down, bring my thread to the front. I'm going to put a half hitch in there. Because I'm going to try to use my rotary now. You got to be really careful with this, because uh, you can clip that wire yeah, with the on end that, of that hip hook, point, yeah. and it'll break it real quick. Yeah, this is going to be a real flashy little guy. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I've got a little bit of an overlap wire there, but we've got the idea of what it's doing. I'll just run this forward. And, you know, again, I think this is a dropper fly. I oh, think it'd be probably great more dropper. people use yeah. this. Now, this wire comes in different sizes. Uh, this happens to be 
the BR size or brassy size as they call it. Mm -hmm. It does come small, which is, oh, not quite half that distance or that diameter, I would so say. So this is kind of a medium, this medium, is a medium wire here? Yep. Okay. Now I'm going to tie in a little bit of this black crystal flash. This will become the wing case. Now I tie this a little, I varied the pattern mm -hmm. because I don't have some of the latex uh, or the uh, epoxy that they call for for the wing case. I think it's mostly just a... Uh, oh, they a, called for an epoxy. A black or a shiny wing case okay. cover, I think is what it is. At least that's what I've done. I, I hope I'm not insulting the guy that came up with the fly, but uh, I think this will work very well by doing it this way. Yeah. Now I'll take a couple of strands of peacock curl. I'll get rid of the butts. Clip the tips even, tie them in. I'll make a little uh, rope here with twist my time that. See, thread. that's another trick I've got to remember to do is twist my peacock Well, curl the, the peacock won't break yeah. then if, you, if a fish does get a tooth that's in it. That's a good idea. There's the peacock. Then I'll take this crystal flash mm -hmm. and just fold it right over the top. It makes a little wing case. Kay. It spreads itself out enough that it, it becomes quite shiny. Yeah, that looks good. Oh, well, if I could get my thread untangled here. And I will put some head cement on top of that when I'm all through, on top of that crystal flash. Clip it off. And then the tricky part, we'll take some of this partridge. You could mm -hmm. use grouse, you could use about anything you wanted to use. Just take a small amount. Okay. I'll tie it on the side of my opposite myself to start with. And what this is going to become is just little kicker legs out there on the side. Okay. Uh, I like to keep them on the short side if I can. Take a little bit more, get them on my side. Now that one came out a little longer. So I'll just grab the butts and pull them through so they're about the same length. So is this legs or a little a little wing case or either? I I would say it's legs okay. because they're going to be moving. It could be gills. It could be called gills. Uh, and then bind, make yourself a little head right here behind the bead. Yeah, he is flashy. Yeah, it really is. And I've got a little bit of overlap red thread. It's almost red like a lightning bug, there. isn't that? Yeah, different, a little, little bit. It's just colors. a little bit flashier. Mm -hmm. And then for the head cement, what I do with this is I just put a good coat of head cement right over the top of that black crystal flash instead of the epoxy. And that's the basic Copper John. Now, like I say, it is a variation mm -hmm. of the original pattern. But there's not a doubt in my mind that that fly will yeah, work, just good. not a doubt. Copper John has a gold bead head, brown goose biots, red, green, or copper wire for the body, peacock thorax, and chucker or grouse legs for the, the gills or the legs. And now for our next fly, Carolyn will tie another bead head it's just kind of a nondescript little bead head called a bead head right. soft tackle. Um, All I, purpose, use it anywhere. I'll bet it would. Yep. Again, I'll bet you use it lake or stream. Lake or stream, yes. Okay. Works very well in streams also. So what we're going to use is uh, eight dot thread. We've got a small uh, 16 barbless hook. We're going to use a black tungsten bead on this. Uh, for the body, we're going to use peacock curl, and we're going to finish it out with uh, uh, mallard wing for the, the hackle, okay? Uh, mallard breast. Yeah. Now, do you find that it, you, you hear a lot, you read a lot, the difference between tungsten and a regular bead? Do you find they sink better? I don't. Uh, I uh -huh. don't see a lot of difference really? between. Do you? I don't know. I've never purchased the tungsten. All I've ever used is just the standard ones. You know, I bought it because it's black. I oh, wanted I the different finish. Well, they do you know? have so, black yeah. in the regular ones, yeah. too. But I've just never bought the tungsten. I've, I've listened to guys talk that have been at shows, and they will have a tungsten bead, a regular bead, sitting on a little drop lever mm -hmm. in water, same distance to the bottom. They trip the lever. They both fall. They tell me the tungsten will hit the bottom 
quicker every time. So I don't know. Jeez, That's I, all I've ever seen yeah. or heard of. Interesting. Because, yeah, that I bought it because it was black. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> That's the only reason. Um, this is a great little dropper fly again. Mm -hmm. um, I love those dropper flies. I was going to say, I've never seen anybody fish as many droppers oh, as you man, do. Oh, man, I always fish droppers. I never fish a single fly unless, of course, you're not supposed to. But, yeah, this is a great little dropper fly. Very easy to tie. So Very simple. So, basically, you're cheating. You're using two flies where you should be using one. Hey, it gives them more choices, you know. It lets you catch you know, more fish. Smorgasbord. Okay. okay. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Well, you know you're right. Many times the fish will come look at the front fly and yeah. take the dropper. Yeah, it will. That's very true. Okay, we're gonna we dressed our hook, mm -hmm. okay, and we're gonna lay this peacock, and I'm gonna lay it uh, right across the body so I get a nice smooth wrap when I wrap this. And we're just we took two strands. We're just gonna wrap this around. So there's here. no tail. No tail on this guy. Risk. And you know how many times we've used peacock in one way or another on these series um, of shows? We've had at least one fly every a show, lot, haven't we? I think. Uh, but it's hard to beat peacock oh, for a, yeah. for a uh, body material. Yep. So we're going to dress this up. He's going to be nice, fuzzy little body here. Now, where do you fish this fly? Um, I really like to fish it, you know, the Clark Fork, Kelly Creek, North Fork. Clearwater, uh, any, but any, always in those smaller sizes, uh, and always with I've, a black head. No, I, I sometimes use uh, the copper ones. I like copper oh, do you? soft okay. tackles. Okay. You can change the body material. You can, you can do a dub, okay. a gray. So it's just green. a kind of a little nondescript. Do you know right. where it came from? The fly? Boy, I have no idea. There's okay. so many different uh, body materials you could use. Sure, hackles that you could use. Mm -hmm. Anywhere from pheasant rump feathers mm -hmm. to you know the the well, mallard. Pheasant or, rump would be awful big for a, a foot yeah, but you small. could go a, a larger larger oh, sure. pattern. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So yeah, you could do. There's a lot mm -hmm. of different ways to do this fly. So okay, so we're gonna trim this off, and we've we've got a brown. We're gonna use a brown hackle here. Well, that's a uh, breast feather, isn't it? Mallard yeah, breast? Yeah, I think it's a mallard breast feather here, so I'm going to cut some of this off. Oh, I had to try your little trick, though, go from the front, huh? Well, I, yeah. that's just the way I do it. You I, know, copy. We'll copy it. See if I can get it in there. Okay, we're going to tie this in right behind our little bead. And this gives a quite a contrast with this color of, of mallard feather with mm -hmm. the little black Head. Now is that so natural I like or is it dyed? It no, almost, I think this one's dyed. It looks like it has a little yeah. bit of a lemon. And I'm going to use a, a little hackle plier on this mm -hmm. because it's so small. I'm going to pull these back as we go around. That'll totally encompass that whole fly. Yeah. Lemon. Yep. He's going to have really long, long, long hackle on him. Get these guys spread now, out. Now do you tie them all that long? Uh, you hackle, can well you again again you can change that out and do little short ones. Mm -hmm. um, this one here, I love this uh, color combination. Mm -hmm. um, this one works quite well for me. So with that larger hackle, yeah, in. yeah, and this you, color. You know, you could get a chucker wing and, and get some same, real yeah. small feathers, or some of them on the breast even are quite small. Yeah. If you wanted to have a little bit smaller hackle, with yeah, it. this is one fly you can just. Do a lot of different, different combinations. Well, you change, yeah, you could even change the the color of the hackle. You could go yep. to a grouse, a yep. blue grouse, a rough grouse, which would make it a lot darker. And that's him. Yep. I've even seen him with uh, peacock breast feathers. The bright, the bright oh, blue. Oh, the blue. Yep. Really. Yep. But there we go. Soft hackle, bead head. All we used was peacock curl for the body. We've got a tungsten black bead and a little mallard wing. Now this last fly I have not heard of before and it's got a real interesting name. This is a chucker and copper, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting fly. Have you fished this one or tied this one before? Never okay, have. so this is a Never new have one. Have new right? One. I don't even know where I got that big spool of copper wire, but I grabbed it. I thought, well, it'll come in handy for something. But anyway, virtually nothing to the fly at all. Uh, again, the soft hackle feature. Yeah. I'll use an 8 dot thread. I have a 2X long size 8 in the vise, and that's the hook we'll use. Chunk of copper wire and a uh, piece of, ch or a feather of chucker, uh, Hungarian chucker partridge. Now, this fly is different 
in as much as the body material, the, the copper wire, is not tied on. Oh, it's not tied down no. at all. Okay. It's big enough that it just wraps Stays itself put. around. Yeah. At least that's the only way I could see that the fly could be tied. You can see that's quite large. Yeah. And when you put a bend in it, and I won't cut that with my scissors. I'll come in here with my little side cutters. Yeah, that'd clean your scissors. And cut a piece off. That'd ruin them. Yes, it will. Now I'll start back here at the back, and it's just exactly like you put your lead wire on. If I can get back far enough. So you don't tie it down at all. Okay. If you do, I don't know how you would do it. I'll get two or three wraps here where I know it's going to stay in place and not want to rotate around the hook shank. And then I will get my uh, rotary going and just wind it to the front. But it gives a real segmented look. It's uh, going to sink real good. It will <laughs> sink well. Yes, it will. And you know, like, like we've said, even on this show, if I had one fly to fish, I would fish a soft tackle soft fly. I just, I, 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 I team taught with a, an old gentleman that I've heard him say that over and over. And I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to him with it. Mm -hmm. You know, he's just an old guy. He doesn't know what he's talking about. But over the years, I have found that he does know what he's talking about. I find myself using this uh, soft tackle material more and it's more. It's certainly my go-to fly. When oh. nothing else is working, oh, I go to yes. a soft tackle. I'm going to take my pliers and just make sure that this is all wrapped down nice and neat, as neat as you can. And you know, I, I've tied, I tied one of these flies just to see what it would do. Mm -hmm. and. I thought to myself, well, there's no way in the world it's going to stay on that hook shank. But I don't think there's good. any way in the world that you could pull that heavy uh, wire off there. I mean, if I catch a fish big enough to loosen that wire and pull it, it off. It was worth it. <laughs> yeah. I'll go tie another one. Yeah. It would be totally worth it. Now, they do tie this in smaller sizes. Uh, I'm sure they also would tie it in larger sizes. I'm trying to find a hackle here that's large enough to really circle the, the hook. I'll get rid of that under fur. And again, I tie mine by the tip. This has a little bit of a brown tint to it at the very uh, mm -hmm. front of the fly. Will not hurt a thing. I would also tie this fly with some grouse, um, make it a little bit darker. Just tie that in. Get a good wrap on it get my hackle pliers. You know, I have seen guys grab these feathers with their fingers and wrap them on there, and I just can't make it work right. They're too small so for me. So I go back to my old standard that I know that works. I've tried it. I really have tried now, it. did you say you've used this fly? I have or not. Or is this a no, new pattern I have for not. you also? It's a new pattern for me. Uh, you know, as we were going through books and magazines mm -hmm. just putting together this show, you can look at a fly and you know you just have an idea that's going to work and I know where I'm going to fish it and that's kind of the way this one hit me I, I think it would be a good lake fly uh, oh yeah you could eat, you fish it by itself not necessarily like you fishing droppers yep. a lot this one in larger sizes like this one I would fish it by itself mm -hmm. but the segmented body the segmented copper look is just really neat I, I like the way it looked now, if I were going to tie several of these for myself, like I told you with that one you had, after I tied the copper wire on, mm -hmm. before I tied that uh, uh, hackle on, I would coat that whole thing with a good base of head cement. Head cement Let yeah. it dry. It makes it Let shinier. It up, yeah. Yep, it makes it shinier. But the segmentation of looking at that copper wire, and, and insects are like that. You look at an insect and it's segmented. But that's the yeah. whole fly. It just called a chucker and, and copper. Now, I should have searched through that neck, that body there, just a little bit more to find a longer hackle. Uh, this one will work fine, but I would tie the next one. I would try to it's find longer. it with a little bit longer. Yeah. But that just looks like a fish catching fly. And you know, I bet you could catch panfish with that. 
Oh, I yeah. don't they, know they're about suckers bass. For, yeah. They're suckers for those soft mm -hmm. tackle. Yeah. But I really think panfish could be caught with that. Right out of the weeds. Uh -huh. Yep. But that's a chucker nice and cartridge. Uh, a chucker and cartridge. A chucker <laughs> and copper. Uh, nothing more than a large size mm -hmm. copper wire. A chucker uh, hackle. Okay, Leroy, we have time for a bonus fly. Hope so we're so. going to tie a Sheep Creek Special. Is that the name of this right. one? Lake fly. Use Lake it all fly. over southern uh, Idaho. That's where I first saw it. Okay, so what Simple materials are we going to use here? I'll use a 6 aught black tying thread. This is a size 8, uh, 2X long hook. The hackle will be brown. Chenille, uh, they call for a peacock chenille. This is a variegated uh, peacock to black. We'll have a rib of copper or gold wire and then a wing of mallard breast. I have the hook in the vise. I have pinched the fly, the barb, on the hook. And you know, I don't think I have a hook in my box that has a barb in it. Oops, um, I always mash them all down. Well, I find myself, I'll go someplace to go fishing and uh, you're you in forget? a barbless area. <laughs> and if the game warden comes and checks you, you might be in deep doo-doo with that. So I try to pinch them all off. All right, as a rear, hackle of brown. Okay. I have no idea what this fly represents. I have seen them a lot. I've seen them around Boise, Idaho Falls, all over those areas around there. Now they fish this one deep or is this off weed beds? Could Any not idea? tell you that. Okay. The, the pattern did not say that it was weighted one way or the okay. other. So I can't tell you that for sure. We'll get that bound down nice and tight. I've got a little piece of copper wire laying here from a previous fly. I'll just grab it and use it for the rib, save grabbing into that other stuff. Then I'll get a little piece of this chenille. I'm going to try not cutting that. This is a bonus fly and we may get in trouble for it, but I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to tie that chenille on right here. You know, with a rotary vise, you don't have to cut that material yeah. off. Yeah, so it, it, you can it just saves the wrap waste away. a little. Yes. Yeah. So here it goes. You know, it, it may represent a little bait fish, a little perch of some kind with this wing that we're going to put on it next. Yeah. The hackle in the back is quite different. I'm going to put a half hitch in that, and I'm going to run that rib up. Now this is copper wire. Uh, you could also use gold for that. Mm -hmm. Would matter not. Back to the heel of the scissors, trim it off. And then I'm going to take just a little bit of mallard breast, and this will become a wing. I'll get rid of that. And this lays right on top. Lays right, right on okay. top. I'm going to pull those down until they get as even as I can make them. Just kind of fold them around itself and lay it right on top. Okay. It's going to be about back over the uh, the hackle that we just put on. Trim the butts. And I'll go ahead and, and wrap this up as I'm finishing tying this head. It's called a Sheep Crick Special. It has brown hackle for the ha rear hackle. It has peacock for the body, ribbed with uh, copper wire, and it has mallard breast for the wing. And that concludes another show. We had four flies tonight. Yep. We had the copper john. We had the bead head soft hackle. Right. We had the chucker and copper, and we had a sheep crick special. Hope you'll go out and use them, tie them, have fun with them, and we'll see you again next week. Leroy and Carolyn have produced a 60-minute video demonstrating how to tie 10 of their favorite flies. Available on DVD number 28 for $18.95 plus shipping and handling. Programs from this series are also available on DVD. Each disc contains two programs and costs $18.95 plus shipping and handling. Please indicate disc number 25 for this episode. 
You can get the complete series of 13 programs for $89.95. Credit cards are accepted. To order, call 1-800-883-0124 or visit our website, kwsu.org. For more information about this program, please visit our website, kwsu.org.